Greetings, my friends. I want to thank you all for subscribing. I want to thank all of my channel members for supporting me in this endeavor to save pop culture. And if you are not subscribed, please consider supporting this channel. We need you. Thank you. My friends, last night the final episode of Ahsoka Season 1 aired, and it made one thing painfully and finally clear to me. Disney has no idea how to make Star Wars. They don't know what Star Wars is, even after all these years, nor can they seem to hire anyone who does know what Star Wars is, other than Jon Favreau, who knew what Star Wars was supposed to be in the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, and then forgot again. I'm just sitting on the old Doom couch, drinking a Doom scotch, and watching this sad, shambling excuse of a finale lurch across the screen. And somehow during the show, I had something of an out-of-body experience, where I was hovering above my own body, watching what Dave Filoni was doing to Star Wars with a clarity and objectivity that was free of hatred, free of joy, free of love, I was able to look at undead zombie troops, witches casting spells while Thrawn looks on, waiting for the witches to solve his Jedi problem for him, a Mandalorian chick who never had the Force, and then suddenly she's the bestest MR Force user there ever was, just in time when the plot needed her to be. And I just all at once realized, this garbage isn't Star Wars anymore. Oh, you can say Filoni is expanding the canon of Rebels. And I'd say, yeah, exactly. Filoni isn't interested in making George Lucas Star Wars. He's interested in making Dave Filoni Star Wars. And watching this crap last night, it became clear to me that these two things are not the same. Not at all. You mean Dave Filoni isn't God? Dave Filoni didn't save Star Wars? No, Harvey. I think maybe Dave Filoni could possibly save Star Wars, if he ever decided to make any. Look, we will be breaking this episode down in great detail tonight on Pop Culture Breakdown at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I hope you'll stop by to hear our very candid thoughts on the matter. But as far as this review goes, here's the thing, folks. I can't believe I even have to say this. But let's refresh our memories about what Star Wars is supposed to be. Star Wars is supposed to be a science fantasy adventure. It's the hero's journey, grounded in classical literature and cinema. Star Wars was rooted in the serials of the 1940s and 50s with thrilling battles and narrow escapes against incredible odds. It was very much a male-oriented, old-fashioned cliffhanger filled with nobility, villainy, and most importantly of all, fun. Star Wars was fun under George Lucas. Just like Raiders of the Lost Ark, every frame of Star Wars was jam-packed with fun, great characters, hilarity and joy, acknowledging the naive adventures of the past, filtering them through a postmodern lens. And that is precisely what's missing with Disney's Star Wars. For a company once labeled the happiest place on Earth, Disney hasn't made anything innocent and fun in a very, very long time. Their Star Wars is joyless, dead, uninspired, and plagiaristic, ripping off anything and everything under the sun in a desperate attempt to steal a little fun from somewhere else. Somewhere not as creatively dead as the Walt Disney Corporation. And that brings us to the finale of Ahsoka. At this point, I should warn you that spoilers follow, so if you're one of those people genuinely enjoying this show who hasn't seen the finale yet, God bless you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. You should probably step away from this review right now. I respect anyone who likes the show, but at this point, I'm fed up. I'm completely fed up with this sad and tattered masquerade. People tell me, hey Doomcock, lighten up. Ahsoka isn't great. It's not terrible. It's meh. I like it okay. To which I reply, at this point, 
After years and years of shoddy attempts, insults to fans, disappointment and despair, presenting us with something as meh as Ahsoka is in and of itself a slap in the face to fans, a huge gob of spit in our eyes, and a sneer that says after all the years listening to your complaints, listening to your ideas, listening to your pleas, we disrespect you and George Lucas and Star Wars so much we can't even be bothered to make something good for you. Oh sure, we could hire actual writers. We could get talented, passionate people in to help provide the quality and fun that we sadly cannot bring to Star Wars because we're dead and soulless inside. We have the money and resources to reach out and bring you something that would inspire you all, fill you with wonder and make your lives better. Uh, but nah, fuck that. We're going to keep slinging shoddy, boring, barely coherent shit into your troughs because we're convinced that if we keep making garbage long enough, eventually you little piggies will just give up, forget what quality used to taste like, gobble up the mediocrity and ask for more with eyes as dull and dead as ours. That's what Disney Star Wars is. At this point, I'm almost convinced that all of the shitty programming coming out of Hollywood isn't really designed to be woke. That's just a side effect of being dead and joyless inside. No, I think what Hollywood is trying to do ultimately is wear us all down. Grind us down to the point where we give up looking for good entertainment. We lose the memory of what quality even was back in the day. And we become acclimated to mediocrity. Accepting substandard corporate product as the norm. Like good little corporate consumers. Yeah. That's Ahsoka, in a nutshell. So many people have chided me, saying Ahsoka's good enough, it's not great, it's kind of boring, but look! Anakin Skywalker on green screen! De-aged! Member berries, yum! Well, I tell you this, my friends, fuck member berries. This may be enough for some who have forgotten what great entertainment is, but not this supervillain. Member berries weren't enough to con me in Pucard Season 3, and they sure as shit ain't fooling me with Ahsoka. After all these years of failure after failure, as God is my witness, I would be delighted if they just stopped making their shitty, joyless, hollow version of Star Wars so I'd never have to watch a Disney Star Wars project again. Absolutely delighted. It would be a mercy. But hey, let me go ahead and get into a few specifics here. I'll do my best to give you the out-of-body perspective I had when I was floating above the couch and really seeing Ahsoka for what it was, a generic fantasy ripoff of Lord of the Rings and Chronicles of Narnia that some hacker reskinned to look like Star Wars. Dude, Ahsoka is like the zombie stormtroopers in the show. Soulless corpses in Star Wars clothing, lurching around and hoping someone will mistake this remake of Weekend at Bernie's for George Lucas's galaxy far, far away. I mean, what the fuck is up with this magic crap? Necromancy with witches? Sabine having no force ability until she claps her hands and says she believes in fairies and then Tinkerbell splashes her and suddenly she's throwing the force around like Anakin Skywalker on steroids? I approve of all the witchery and the necromancy, given that I, too, am a practitioner of those particular arts. However, that's not really George Lucas's Star Wars, is it? Magic and all that crap was in the EU, and I always thought it was a mistake. And Dave Filoni is using these supernatural elements to dilute and undermine George Lucas's Star Wars, which was science fantasy. Not fantasy fantasy, not Lord of the Rings fantasy, not Chronicles of Narnia. I'm not sure why Disney seems obsessed with magic. You got Agatha Harkness getting her own show, you got undead stormtroopers and the witches of Dathomir and Ahsoka. Disney seems to be slipping the occult into their programming almost as much as they're slipping LGBTQ plus content into their kiddie shows. Not exactly baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet, is it? But this has been a high overview of what's wrong with Ahsoka. Let's get down to some specifics. Though frankly, I'm too disgusted to break down the whole damn mess. This episode's title is The Jedi, The Witch, and The Warlord. <laughs> a clear ripoff of C.S. Lewis trying to equate the brilliance of the Chronicles of Narnia with Ahsoka. It doesn't work, of course. It just seems pathetic. 
But I guess after somehow escaping the wrath of fans, after having the unmitigated gall to blatantly rip off Tolkien by having Ahsoka the Grey turn into Ahsoka the White, I mean, are you kidding me? Filoni thinks he can get away with any bullshit he wants to. For instance, here's Balin standing on a giant statue with extended arms straight out of Fellowship of the Ring. Why? I don't know. Creative bankruptcy, perhaps? Who can say? But there's so much recycled shit in Ahsoka, if you played a drinking game spotting them all, you'd probably wind up in the hospital or the morgue. So what's good about this episode? Watching Morgan Elspeth fight Ahsoka with a magic glowing green sword crafted out of her own soul, I suspect, was good mainly because Diana Lee Inosanto actually fights with skill and intensity that makes up for Rosario Dawson's lackluster portrayal of Ahsoka as a woman afflicted with somnambulism. Diana makes the fight actually interesting by the sheer intensity of her expression. Watch her face during this, it's pretty remarkable. Sadly, any real tension in the scene is undermined because a shit ton of stormtroopers are surrounding them as they fight, and they're too bored to even take a shot at Ahsoka. They're just like, yeah, yeah, wake us up when Ahsoka beats Morgan so we can resume shooting at and missing Ahsoka again. And that's the episode in a nutshell. Superior Imperial troops with superior equipment, shooting and missing, shooting and missing, shooting and missing. Good God in heaven, this thing could suck the peanuts out of shit and then turn the peanuts into a Disney Plus show. I understand that's how they came up with the Kenobi series, but I digress. The plot is thin and ridiculous. Ezra builds a new lightsaber so both he and Sabine can have one, despite Sabine not having the Force and not being a Jedi or a Padawan. But Sabine is a Mandalorian to another Padawan who actually never became a Jedi, so of course both these ladies use the Force as good as Anakin or Luke ever did. Although Sabine only becomes a Master Force user once the plot needs her to. She manages the old, uh-oh, I'm trapped. I need to force grab my lightsaber to free myself. And she does that and whoa, Nelly, look out world. Stunning and brave whamming on the loose. She's using the force left and right, blocking shots fired at her back as she whirls and spins. This from someone with no historical aptitude for the force and very little training, but plot armor as thick as the base of the Great Pyramid. I'm a Jedi, you're a Jedi, and if you drink Dr. Jedi, wouldn't you like to be a Jedi too? Fuck. Me. There's a hilariously awful scene where Ahsoka's shuttle is slowly flying in front of the great turtle alien migration, low to the ground, moving about literally 20 miles an hour, when suddenly two of Thrawn's TIE fighters get the jump on them. They get in two strafing runs on the shuttle, and miss! Oh, they get some grazing shots in there that don't do a whole lot of damage, but holy shit, the plot armor is ridiculous! Dave, if two TIE fighters can't take out a practically grounded shuttle moving at about 20 miles an hour, give it up! Disney has already made lightsabers a non-lethal joke, and now TIE fighters are just as pathetic! Basically, two TIE fighters in two runs fail to kill the ship, and so they're swinging back for a very optimistic third pass. Yeah, like that's going to help. Flying in formation so perfectly spaced that Sabine is able to just fly at them with the ship, clip each one with the tips of her wings, and send them spiraling to their fiery deaths. And then the shuttle kind of sort of crashes, but no worries. A ship blasted by TIE fighters in a high-speed collision with them wing-to-wing -wing is perfectly fine by the end of the show. Hu Yang, fortunately, had some duct tape and ordinary household bleach stashed away for a rainy day. Mainly because he's a fan of MacGyver. So does anything else happen? Shit, I don't know. Stuff happens, but nothing surprising. Thrawn jumps out of there, back to Dathomir and Ezra manages to hitch a ride undetected on the Chimera, manages somehow to steal a shuttle from the Chimera, manages to get away from the Chimera, manages somehow to rendezvous with Hera and the rest of the New Republic fleet without knowing where they are, though none of this is actually shown. Hell no. We don't see any of that shit. 
It happens off screen because, well, let's face it, it's too stupid and sad to show. Dave just wanted Ezra back home, but if Dave had actually shown the process I just described, it would have severely diminished Thrawn. It's tough for Thrawn to be seen as a feared enemy and brilliant military strategist when he's so incompetent a dude can board his flagship, steal a shuttle from under his nose, take the shuttle off the ship, and jump away without being detected and or blasted to atoms. Even letting him get that shuttle off the ship in the first place tends to make Thrawn look like a rube who belongs in Green Acres, not Coruscant. But the worst part, folks, the part that actually made me laugh in my despair. Just watch the part where Ahsoka is using her lightsabers against the night troopers. Oh, oh, oh my god, people. Rosario Dawson commits some of the worst lightsaber fighting I've ever seen in my life. I swear to god. Watch it for yourself. Rosario is just waving her two lightsabers around in front of her listlessly like guys on airport runways wave their flashlights around directing the baggage truck to the terminal. Watch and see if I'm exaggerating. It was laughably bad. She's just waving this shit around aimlessly, trusting the animators to put bolts in in post to make her look like she's actually doing something, eh, but they don't. They forget or something, they're bored, they're overworked, who knows. It's the worst lightsaber bullshit I've ever seen. Good God almighty, this is trash. Let's wrap this up. In short, not a lot happens. The Imperial forces shoot and miss a lot. There's plot armor and so on. Thrawn and the Witches of Dathomir jump to Dathomir. Ahsoka and Sabine are left behind on the planet of the Turtles. Anakin pops in at the end as a square up. Hoping to end things on a good note, he doesn't have any lines, he just kind of sparkles in the dark, but all it does is make me gag. Anakin doesn't pop up for Luke, does he? Ignores everything else in the Disney sequel trilogy, yeah? But Ahsoka strolling amid her turtles? Bingo. <laughs> Screw this. Star Wars is dead, folks. Or at least my desire to watch Star Wars is as dead as those zombie stormtroopers. Star Wars under Disney is a lifeless, shambling corpse reanimated by four billion dollars and a bunch of people with no idea how to write compelling stories. I'm sick of the whole damn thing. We'll discuss this more on Pop Culture Breakdown tonight at 7 p.m., but in the meantime, folks, <laughs> you should have no trouble staying angry.